temple is a very important and major temple visited by tourists in Luxor city together with the great grand Karnak temple. This season, the temple is totally packed with tourists coming from all over the world to visit the temple that was built by two pharaohs, King Ramses II and King Amun Hotep III. King Amun Hotep III ordered the construction of Luxor Temple for the triad gods of Thebes on the location of the ruins of the Middle Kingdom Temple in 1360 BC. There were two reasons behind this order, the first of which is to reassure his kinship to God Amun himself, as his rights to sit on the throne were incomplete when the royal Egyptian tradition stated that the pharaoh had to be a son of a king and a queen or married to a princess of pure royal blood. Neither conditions applied on Amun Hotep III, having a foreign mother and a wife from the common people called T. After the death of his father, he consulted with the priests of God Amun to legalize his claim of the throne by relating himself directly to God Amun as a son. They came up with a story similar to the story of the divine birth of Queen Hatshepsut and recorded it on the walls of the birth chapel in Luxor Temple. The story simply says that God Amun revealed himself to Amenhotep's mother, Mutim Uya, as a human in the image of her husband, Tutmosis IV. So she had a relation with him and gave birth to a male, whom he called Amenhotep, which means God Amon is content. This story proves that his road to the throne wasn't smoothly paved and it gave him a priority and advantage to all the previous pharaohs for he is a direct descendant from Amon himself. This leads to the second purpose of building the temple which is satisfying the priests of Amon and expanding their power by building a great temple for Amon. The great open court of Amenophis III is 51 meters wide by 45 meters. It's the highlight of the temple with its splendid columns that were erected in the eastern and western and northern sides. There are a total of 64 columns taking the shape of bunches of papyrus plants with closed capitals. They set an example of the beauty and perfection of the ancient Egyptian art of architecture. The apexes on top of the columns used to hold the ceiling, which stones almost fell completely. It used to allow beams of light designed to show shades to the columns, which are lined in two rows specially for that purpose. The open court was dedicated to the religious celebrations in which the people participated. That's why it's called the Celebrations Court. the form of a human whose head is topped by a crown 
composed of two vertical reeds. He has also appeared with a human body and a ram's head, for the ram was a sacred animal of God Ammon. Sometimes he takes the shape of God Min, the god of fertility, and in other times he appears in the geese form. His cult started in Armand and flourished in Thebes. He was mentioned in the pyramid texts as an eternal god, for he was connected with the octonary of El Ashmunin. His cult has extended to include the whole Egyptian land, being a state god. He was also associated with god Zeus of Greece. A merge has happened between Amon and Ra, starting from the 11th dynasty. This has appeared for the first time on the stele of King Entef Wa'anch, or Entef II. He was also mentioned in more than a place in the reliefs of the temple of King Montahotep II, Nebhebet Ra, to earn the adjectives of Ra and his powerful position amongst people, and to have himself accepted and his nature as being Ra is understood. As a sun god, it was difficult for people to understand the meanings of hidden and absence and ambiguousness, which his name symbolizes. Frankfurt suggests that the reason behind the merge between Ra and Amon is due to the nature of Amon as a god of air. For the creative power in air and the sun is the same, and that elevating Amon Ra to the stage of the greater god Ra was on the basis that there isn't a force or a power in the universe that can match merging the sun with the air. Nevertheless, the adjective of Amon as a god of air wasn't related to him until the New Kingdom era. open court, we find a colonnade, which is a building with walls, ceilings and columns and gates. Here in Luxor Temple, it comprises four rows of columns, each side has four columns, formed in the same shape of the festival's court columns. It could be considered a transfiguration hall for the god. That's where the statue of the god rises after it comes out of the sanctuary which lies behind the hall. The remaining scenes on the walls represent the various regions of Egypt, represented by the Nile god Hadi carrying offerings. These offerings show the productions of each district, while Amun Hotep stands in front of the gods of Thebes. Some pharaohs recorded their names in cartouches on the columns and walls of this hall, like Seti I, Ramesses II, Ramesses III, Ramesses IV, and Ramesses VI. There are three chapels on the right and left sides of the hall dedicated to God Khonso, the son of Amon, and God Ismut, his wife. It is thought that they were dedicated to the sacred barks of each of them. Broken steps led once to the ceiling. In the middle of the southern wall of the colonnade, Few steps lead to a hall where eight columns were erected. During the Roman period and in 379 AD, Emperor Theodosius I declared Christianity to be the state religion of Egypt. Thus, the Coptics converted this hall 
into a church. They started by removing the ape columns and closing the entrance to the sanctuary by blocking it with a wall in the form of a niche with two granite columns on both sides. The beautiful carvings of Amun Hotep III in relationship with gods were covered with a thick layer of plaster over which Christian figures of saints were painted. By time, part of the coating fell down to reveal the original reliefs of the king in front of God Amon and Goddess Mut. Behind the church is a hole with four columns, thought to be dedicated to the offering tables, for more than 40 offering scenes are relieved on its walls. In the middle of its southern wall lies the original sanctuary of the temple, which is meant to be on a straight axis to the entrance. King Amenophis III is represented on its walls, presenting many sorts of offerings to the gods. He releases incense from a long pipe to purify the gods and the sanctuary and presents a list of offerings in which the name and quantity of each offering is written in a square. The offerings included colored clothes, vases, incense burners, oils, food, beverage and linen. used to hold the ceiling of the sanctuary, but were removed in 332 BC by Alexander the Great, who wanted to construct a chapel for the sacred bark of Ammon in his name, although the boat was already placed in the sanctuary of Amenophis. This chapel is known now by the Chapel of Alexander. On both its external and internal walls, he pictured himself in different relations with a triad of Thebes. By that, he became the first Greek king, imitating the pharaohs, dressing like them, and placing his name in a pharaonic cartouche. The act which was followed by all his successors and by the Roman emperors for 900 years. The poor art of the Greeks can hardly be compared to the fine ancient Egyptian art shown in the delicate reliefs of Amun Hotep III sanctuary. sources revealed for the first time directly and thus on the walls of the chapel of Caesar Street I in Karnak the title of Kamut F which is a title that expresses the role of God Amun Ra as being a god of fertility. The expression of Kamut F means the bull of his mother while its meaning proves the great importance of the idea of fertility and regeneration of life and birth of the human and in all factors of the universe of animals and plants. The significance of Kamut F is so old and spread in the ancient Egyptian religion and that's what made the ancient Egyptians deal with that expression as an independent embodiment of the fertility god. The Egyptians had expressed their thoughts about the relation that connects three generations of one divinity through what Amun does in his feast when he visits the octonary dwelling in Havu city each 10 days and which expresses the three generations of Amun and that happens through the concept of Kamut F. The texts of the 18th dynasty in Havu city tell that Amun's title is the father of fathers 
and the grandfather of the octonary. In addition to Amon, the grandfather, who represents the first generation, the texts tell about a second generation of the same god, when Amon is impersonified in a serpent figure under the name of Irta, which means the Earth Creator. That serpent is described as the father of the octonary, which means that Amon in the figure of a serpent is the Earth Creator and the son of Amon, the grandfather, and the father of the octonary. It's noticed that the second generation of Amon conforms totally with the advantages and characteristics of God Betah Datinin, or Betah the master of the two lands. Amon in his second generation usually took the sexual form of God Min, and is called Amon in Ibit, or Amon in Luxor, and he's the same God who heads in a procession from Luxor Temple across the Nile to Habo in the West Bank where he presents offerings to his father Amon and to his children of the octonary. leads to the birth chapel of the king. After the marriage of his mother to God Amon, she got pregnant and delivered him. Three rows describe this sacred delivery with the help of goddesses, especially goddess Hekat, a female with a frog head, the goddess of delivery. Then, an important scene show the final outcome of that sacred story when God Khenum, the ram-headed God, sits on the potter's wheel and make the baby of Amun Hatib and his double, the Ka, out of mud and water. Later, Goddess Hathur gives him life represented in the Ankh symbol. With that scene, Aminophis III successfully achieved his main purpose of building the temple and earned the right to sit on the throne of Egypt. In his pursuit to this sacred mission of keeping the throne within his family, he left us with the most prominent architectural achievement in the ancient Egyptian history, Luxor Temple. <laughs> 